Our gospel lesson for this morning is according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory. Here we find Jesus talking about the narrow gate that leads to life everlasting, the broad road that leads to destruction. And the challenge to us is to rely on him and to live in his grace and mercy. He went on his way through the towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you. I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and we drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves cast out, the people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. I love a title like that, Where Are You From? I love a title like that as we're about to start the school year because all my English teachers Get a little irritated. Where's the R? Where are you from? It's colloquial. It's jargon. It's not proper English at all. But it's the title for our message today. And we begin that message in the name of our God, in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, speak that we may hear. Amen. In our gospel text read just moments ago, we heard Jesus teaching his disciples in his day and our day about the kingdom. In this part of Luke's gospel, Jesus is unrolling for them different teachings about the end time, different teachings about the coming of the kingdom in its fullness. And as it started today, Jesus, as he went through towns and villages, he continued to teach. And so often using the language of the people, using stories and images the people would get and grasp. Not highfalutin talk, but rather very simple, down-to-earth, easy-to-understand Examples. Examples so often told with stories. Stories that we could get. That's good for a guy like me, because I'm simple. I'm a simple guy. I wasn't always a pastor. I know that seems you know, hard to believe, but I used to be a young guy, and I wasn't even a pastor's kid, so no one had any expectations for me. I could go under the radar. No one was watching out to make sure I behaved, because my dad was an engineer. No one cared. He wasn't a police officer. He wasn't a pastor. I could go through my adolescence unobserved by adults until, well, certain things that would cause attention, and I was never one for those. For example, I remember loving to go to the movies. I didn't go often because they were expensive then, more so now, but I loved going to the movies. And when you're in junior high, when you're in high school, there's that temptation to realize there are other ways into the movie theater. Now, the way you're supposed to go, and the way my kids will go, because they are pastor's kids, and people will be watching, <laughs> is you go through the ticket counter, you give them money, they give you a ticket, you go to the movie and the theater that you bought the ticket for, right? That's how we're supposed to get there, right? Of course, and we all say, yes, yes. But in junior high, in high school, there's the temptation to find there are other ways into the theater. There's the back door propped open. There's the buying the ticket to the movie you're allowed to go to, 
Benji the Hunted. And then you go a couple theaters down and there's that movie that's R that you're not allowed to go to yet, but maybe you slide on over. There are other ways in. Well, when I was in high school, I was tempted to do this myself. And I wish I could tell you by my moral fiber and personal integrity, I never did. But I didn't because of another reason. And this sounds silly. I wanted to see the movie and enjoy it. To get in for free and not enjoy the movie, what's the point of that? Because if I snuck in, the whole time I'm trying to disengage here and engage there, to engage in the story realm here or for me, I would have to be present there. But if I was worried in my seat that someone would come up and go, sir, you're not supposed to be in here. Sir, you're not supposed to be here and escort me out, whew, I couldn't enjoy it. And if I couldn't enjoy it, what's the point? Well, for many who did go in, the point was, you got to go where you weren't supposed to. You got in for free. You got to the movie you weren't supposed to see. And it becomes more fun, so often fun, to do the thing you're not supposed to do. And I think as adults, we all know there's so many things that are like that. I mean, if that wasn't the case, then why would people drink so much, right? We tell our kids, don't drink, it's bad for you, and that's true. But <laughs> sometimes we have too many. And why do adults do that? Why do they celebrate working all week to have the weekend? Because it is escape for a moment. And for a moment, it distracts. And there's so many things we use to distract ourselves for the moment. We can amuse ourselves past the fact that we can feel empty. There's so many ways to feel satisfied, so many ways to feel like we're whole and we belong to something greater. There are so many ways. But our Lord's word still speaks to us today about the way. The way to a place where we really want to be found. And we want to be found there because we entered in through the gate. We didn't sneak in some other way. In fact, that's where our text goes. For Jesus says, I tell you, you will, many will seek to enter. They want to get into this pen. They want to get into the kingdom, and they try to come some other way other than the narrow door. I like that adjective there, English teachers. There you go. There's my adjective use. The adjective narrow door. Not just the doorway in, but they're going to emphasize that the door in is narrow. This is where you come in. This is the only way by. I'm not a big fan of hallways because people don't know how to walk through them. I've always been irritated about this from high school. I'll see adult people, full-grown, functioning adults, had conversations in the doorway. And I've never understood it. Youth gathering again this year, what did they have to tell us? 25,000 youth, or sorry, 20,000 youth, it was a little lower. And all the adults, which were no better than the kids, what did they have to tell them? Don't stop at the bottom of the escalator. What? You mean the thing's going to keep going and keep depositing people right there at the edge, and if you don't move, we're going to boom, 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 boom? People don't seem, we are eighth graders who just figured out how to make it look like we know what we're doing. Many people need to be told, this narrow door, Christ, this is how you enter. And it's narrow, and it's concrete, and it's specific. It's specifically Jesus Christ for you. This is how we enter. This is how we come. This is how we begin our worship. We come offering up to God. What do we offer in the beginning? We have sinned and thought, word, and deed. This is what we bring to God. We have done what we weren't supposed to, and we didn't do what we were supposed to. This is the offering, the fragrant offering we give, and we get to put it down to be filled with something better. Jesus Christ, through an under-shepherd, speaks to our ear that we may hear the good shepherd's words that we are forgiven and free. Why? Because of what Christ has done for us. He is that narrow door to forgiveness, that narrow door to the life that we are to live now into eternity, into that sheep pen of heaven. 
Many will come in other ways, though, right? Jesus tells the parable. There's this other ways for people to come in. And they'll say to Jesus, they'll say to our Lord, <laughs> I tell you, um, we ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. We were near. We got in. We snuck in. We got here some way. And what does the Lord say? I tell you, I don't know where you're from. Where are you from? Not in here, but you found yourself here. This isn't where you're supposed to be. You didn't come through that narrow door. You may be in this theater, but you don't have that ticket that lets you in. You don't have the Jesus who lets you in. You are here illegitimately. This is not where you are to be. This is not where you are from. This is some place where you are to be cast out of because you don't belong here. You don't mark. You didn't come in in Jesus. Depart. Go out to another place. That parking lot where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You wanted nothing to do with that narrow door. You wanted nothing to do with Jesus. There's a whole parking lot of weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's where the other ways, many and varied though they be, and the world loves to offer us so many ways to being where we want to be, so many ways to happiness. Pastor, as long as we do the best we can, as long as we truly believe, as if our belief is what saves us rather than the one in whom we believe. It's a subtle difference. It's not your faithing, your believing, your trusting, but rather in the one you believe in, the one you trust in, the one you have faith in. It is in that narrow door, Jesus, that we have access to eternity, access to grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and the strength for this life into the life to come. Any other way falls flat. Any other way wears thin. I like in the picture that Jesus gives, not of the movie theater, because they didn't have those, but of the sheep pen. Sheep would have to travel from place to place. You'd have to make a temporary pen to keep them secure. In this journey of life, there's temporary pens. And what's the door? The shepherd would lay down. He would make sure no one comes in or goes out but through him. I get that more as a father now. I'll take my two-year-old and go, it is time for your bed. Walk with me, and I lay her down, and I say it at the end of the bed, or I lay down at the end of the bed between me and her exit route. I've got the bed against the wall. It's got a header and footer. There's only one way out. It's on that side, and Dad is the gate. No two-year-old is sneaking out to Mama's room. No, no, I am the gate. And when she's scared and she gets up, Oh, it's okay. I rub her head. Shh. And I set her back down where she's safe and she belongs. And I tell her, Papa's here. I'm right here. Nothing can get to her that has to go around. It has to go through me. And because she's a child and because she knows a father's love, she trusts me to keep her safe, that nothing evil will come in. Our Lord is the gate. He invites us, his church, come come in. He bears us up and carries us into his fold. We are his flock because he sought us out. The wandering sheep he brings in. Don't go after the wide door. Don't go after the wide road. The narrow is the path. Christ is your Lord. He's the one who bears you up and delivers you. Seek no other way. And the good news is he comes for you. He also invites us to ask, seek, knock and the door will be opened, the door that is Jesus. If you are concerned, if you are worried, if you are plagued by the guilt of sins you've committed in years past or just earlier this morning, fear not, lay those sins down and enter through Christ who says you are forgiven for he took those sins that you may enter in. And when the evil one tries to tell you you don't belong here in God's house, when the evil one says you don't belong in Jesus' heaven or eternity, you can say, bugger off. Heaven, that's where I'm from. Heaven, 
that's where I belong. Jesus, that's where I'm from. Amen? Amen. We pray. Lord, you have called us all through your Son. Through your word, you've spoken to our ear that we may hear and believe that in Jesus Christ we have life here and now and that we have life eternal in and through you. Welcome us all through your Son into your heavenly home. Bless us and protect us on this life of pilgrimage. Keep us safe. And Lord, help us, your church, to have eyes and ears for those who call out to you that we may remind them of your love for them and to them. Gather us, we all, O Lord, good shepherd, in the name of our Lord Christ Jesus, in whose name we have identity and purpose. In the name of our Lord, we pray. Amen.